and welcome to Best of the Worst, a celebration of the very best of the very bad. We'll be looking at everything from the worst album covers to the worst thing to do with a large mallet. Not to mention this, the worst thing to see ahead of you in the queue for the loo. <laughs> so let's welcome our guest this week on David Mitchell's team, comedian Frankie Boyle. <laughs> and with Johnny Vaughan tonight, pop superstar Brian McFadden. Round one is pick the worst, in which both teams try to pick the worst from a number of options. Once they've made their choices, the audience votes, and the team that the audience agrees with gets the points. Tonight we're picking the worst wedding, and our teams have a number of happy couples to choose from. Jordan and Peter. Missy and Skipper. <laughs> Bob and Jane. <laughs> and Sharon and Cindy. <laughs> the Dolphin. OK, Jordan and Peter's wedding. She had a sort of uh, a pink... Cinderella themed. She had that funny big see-through pink carriage. Was it a Cinderella themed wedding? I because think... she had tits like pumpkins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. There's there the is. carriage. There is the carriage. And it's looking a love heart step. Now I don't know if you how to define tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say that's absolutely. Tasteless. And you know what? That, that's where the pony was going for the piss. Look, he's yeah, going. <laughs> <laughs> What did Jordan tell OK Magazine that she and Peter were going to do on their first wedding anniversary? They went to, I think, Disneyland in Florida. And That's right, yeah. Yep, to renew their vows. Jordan and Peter went to Florida last year and met all the Disneyland characters. They're a bit tacky, but quite fun, said Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for her wedding to Peter Andre, Jordan wore a long white dress. It went all the way down to just below her knickers. <laughs> oh, I say knickers. <laughs> she, married, she married that dolphin who she likes enormously, which is... And dolphins actually do have a, I know, a massive libido, don't they? They're really sexy mm. animals. She's looking for his blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> right! <laughs> is dolphin marriage legal? It can't be legal. You can't start giving someone tax breaks because they say <laughs> that. <laughs> It'd be quite galling for gay people, wouldn't it? No, you can't marry, unless it's a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a dolphin of opposite gender, obviously. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, that's just stupid. <laughs> I think the thing about marrying a dolphin is it is still more intelligent than Peter Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the dolphin put the ring? Jumps through it. Nice. Jumps through it. <laughs> Uh, what happened when they first met? They had sex and she nearly drowned. <laughs> <laughs> According to Sharon, when we first met, something clicked. Yes. <laughs> the dolphin. <laughs> when Sharon Tendler married Cindy the dolphin, some of Cindy's family were at the reception in the tuna sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, these people married as Homer and Marge Simpson. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really remember the, the of episode of The Simpsons where Homer had shit all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's got it in his hand as well, if we look. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, he might have gone through the paper there, or... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's gone through the paper, gone through the paper, wiped his mouth... <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't say that in an as-you-do kind of a way. We've all been there. Show me a man who hasn't wiped shit all over his mouth, I'll show you a liar. <laughs> Uh, what were their wedding vows? I don't! <laughs> <laughs> Till death do us Bart. Oh, dear. That doesn't work at all, cos even in The Simpsons, Bart isn't a verb, you know. <laughs> Here are the rest of the wedding party. Look, one of the... look at that blonde one. <laughs> yes, she's, she's come as Marilyn Monroe would look today. <laughs> Uh, on Missy and Skipper, what humiliation did Skipper suffer before his wedding? Oh, did he have his balls cut off? Yes, he was needed. No doubt after enjoying the stag night too much. <laughs> after a stag night, Skipper ended up handcuffed to a lamppost. A nightmare for most people, but heaven if you're a dog. <laughs> and, as usual, the best man got off with a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a symbol of world peace. It really it? could. See well, what can happen. The yeah. cat and yeah. the dog may lie together yeah. in <laughs> penetrative sex. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day doing some calendar shoot. And they've done the kitten and the puppy with all the, with the chocolates and the flowers and the lake and everything. And they thought, fuck it. Let's have a few vodkas and stick the kitten and the dog together and see what happens. Yeah. Now, every time you see one of those calendars or one of those cards, yeah. think of the 
bestial snaps <laughs> that don't make the final cut. But it's like, it's like you know, British porn is a bit yeah. softer. We get the version where they're just cuddling. In the Scandinavian countries, <laughs> Danish style, <laughs> that's what they get. You see the kitten jizz. <laughs> yeah, you really do. <laughs> A massive money shot, a pearl collar. <laughs> <laughs> so, teams, which one gets your vote? Okay, did you go to uh, Jordan and Peter's wedding? Did I fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we go with Pete and Jordan all, Pete all and the Jordan. way. It's just vile, sign of the times. It's kind of cobbled together in this jungle, and it's just. You know, they get their OK shoot for the first night in bed, the first baby. It's just a sign of the times. This audience, I know you're going to back. You look like a lovely bunch, you really do. Especially the guy with the sunburn and the vest. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going along to a show in a studio, I'll get sunburned, wear a vest. And I'll sit next to a guy in a rugby show who's now going to move away like I'm not with <laughs> David and Frankie, what have you chosen? I think anyone who marries any seagoing mammal uh, generally deserves our disgust. It's not going to end well for them. No. I think the human is going to get less and less out of the relationship. She's going to want to go on holidays to places that aren't water. <laughs> <laughs> As you get older, people join the National Trust. That dolphin's not going to want to go round Castle Howard or anything. <laughs> to score your points, the audience needs to agree with you. Let's see what they say. Vote now. So I can tell you the worst wedding is Jordan and Peter Andre. <laughs> Time now for Best of the Worst Bottom Five. This week, a rundown of the very worst album covers of all time. To win their points, all our teams have to do each time is to work out what the album is called. And at number five, the unforgettable McDonald's sisters, but what is their <laughs> hit album called? I've got this album, weirdly. I do collect weird album covers. I do, yeah. I think it's called I've Got Confidence, which I like because there's two of them, but it's just <laughs> I've so, Got Confidence. So the question, which is, the question is which one of them's got yeah, confidence? which one's got the confidence? It's the one without the glasses has got yeah. confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it should have just been called We Are Now Buried In These Woods. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the right looks like the one on the left after about five pints. <laughs> At number four in the list of worst album covers is the irrepressible Ray Bourbon. But what's the album? I was a transvestite Roman emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the money or I drop the sheet. <laughs> Here's a clue. It is, let me tell you about... My cock and balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you about, um, pre-op trannies. I'm going to give it to you. Let me tell you about my operation. Oh! Any idea what the operation was? Of course. <laughs> Take a wild guess. <laughs> As a young Texan, Ray Bourbon was very confused about his sexuality and so his parents sent him to boarding school in England. <laughs> yeah, that should have done it. <laughs> um, and at number three, the minister's corset. Any idea what the title might be here? It's a bit like what Westlife would look like in about five years. <laughs> <laughs> I think my dad has it. It's something like, I'd like to touch him. Yes. It's let me touch him. Yeah. It is let me touch him. Why do you know all these? Because it's a... It's a really <laughs> You're like the Batman and Robin of shit <laughs> records. Give <laughs> <laughs> Brian. We've got a raffle. We've got a raffle. And at number two in our rundown of the worst album covers oh. is Jim Post. What is his album called? <laughs> if this elephant doesn't stop pissing... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. I love... Cock. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, I love the Chuckle Brothers, a wee bit too much? <laughs> it's called, I love my life. And who would? <laughs> At number one, it's the one and only Jose Angel. Oh. Uh, but what's his album called? Is it simply called, I couldn't be gayer if I was skipping through a field of buttercups, wearing an Easter bonnet and licking a lollipop? <laughs> Actually, look, looks like he's posing to get a portrait done as a South American dictator. <laughs> well, what's the album called? You can have a little clue. Madre soy, mother I am. Out the closet now. <laughs> I'm going to give you that. Madre soy cristiano homosexual. It is! <laughs> He's got, like, one leg is a woman's leg. 
You know, like oil rig workers do that. They shave one leg and wear stockings and suspenders so that they can uh, fill themselves up. And uh... <laughs> this might not actually be true. <laughs> It adds a lot to the glamour of the rig, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at the scores. And the worst team at the moment are David and Frankie, but there's still plenty to play for in part two. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Best of the Worst, and it's time to ask which ends the worst. Two video clips, just one question, which is going to end in the worst way? Here's the first clip, and it's from the USA. Oh! <laughs> oh! I mean, there are just so many variables here, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the, the, um, the pitcher throws the ball so hard it smashes out all the batsman's teeth and lodges in his face, <laughs> and because he's an American, he keeps talking. <laughs> I'm trying to work in the fat what? guys with the snacks. So maybe it lodges there and he's in terrible pain and he knows that he needs beer to try and get rid of the pain and so he runs up into the stand and plunges his bloody ball-lodged face into a massive <laughs> pitcher of beer and to calm down. Then the ambulance comes and they are able to rebuild his face. They should make that into an episode of The Casualty. Yeah. <laughs> it's very like the beginning of that kind of thing. You say, like, oh, everything's fine, everyone's having a nice time. Oh, kettle toddler, kettle toddler. <laughs> <laughs> I just love seeing obese people loaded up with snacks, really getting ready to sit down and enjoy themselves. <laughs> I just want to see that guy. There's nothing nice than seeing someone who's above, like, 25 stone with his snacks. And a, he knows where he's going, he knows what yeah, He's got his snacks, he's got his beer, he's got a ball game, and he's going to enjoy himself he's a fat buff. <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes. Look at that. Yeah. Just looking around. It's, it's all good, little, my fat little friend. Little twinkle in his eyes. Yeah. Eh? This didn't happen by accident. <laughs> yeah. This took a lot of work. Uh, I didn't get to be a fat bastard without sitting down for four yeah. hours every week to watch this shite. <laughs> Exercise is an important part in my life. Yeah. I like to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. in this country, we have clothes for men twice the size of me. <laughs> and I one day aspire to fill them. <laughs> he knows the stadium's been reinforced. <laughs> After last year's collapse. And what's more, there's so many fat people there, it doesn't even feel like he's fat. We're working on a new sort of human. Yeah. It's <laughs> twice the size of the old sort, yeah. and it dies at 40. <laughs> In or agony. inside that huge lake of a man is a little heart going. <laughs> <laughs> Hardest working heart in the stadium. <laughs> We're having to send some of this blood literally four yards away. <laughs> uh, where was baseball, the so-called national game of America, first played? British invented all sports. We certainly invented rounders, so I reckon it was somewhere in Britain. It was invented in England. First played in England. We know this because it's mentioned in Jane Austen. Jane Austen, sorry. Oh, yes. Jane Austen. Jane Austen. It's awfully good. Lesser known than Jane Austen, but very good for a read. <laughs> <laughs> no, My was... dear Fanny, the first day we... Sorry. <laughs> The boys are playing baseball. It is wonderful. As we alighted from the carriage, they were hitting balls everywhere with large gloves. Oh, fie! <laughs> My dear sister, I really must get shit-faced on beer and eat lots of hot dogs and grow grotesque. <laughs> um, it was first played in England. We know this as it's mentioned in a Jane Austen novel. Uh, anyone like to guess which one? Mansfield Park. Pride yeah. uh, Northanger Abbey. It's only a glancing reference, if you recall, in which the young Catherine Morland thwarts the scheming Isabella Thorpe and wins the heart of the dashing Captain Tilney by stealing second base with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> Here's the second clip, which comes from Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting wall, man with hammer. <laughs> oh, he's Dutch, he's probably high as a kite. <laughs> They, they say, don't they, if you're demolishing a house, even if it's raining, do it from the outside. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure it's Holland and it's not? Because to me, it looks like Osama bin Laden just he got does. a he just got like a cave improvement grant and he's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to a government report, what's the most dangerous piece of DIY equipment? A hydrogen oh. bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Never use a hydrogen bomb to install a fireplace. <laughs> it's actually the ladder. 
Is it now? Oh, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine, as a five-year-old, he saw his dad, he was drilling into a wall on a ladder, but the, the ladder slipped a bit, and his dad pushed the drill through the top of his head. <laughs> and the thing was, it was stuck. He had to turn it on to get it back out. <laughs> He said he watched his dad make that judgment call. He was like, what are you going to do, Dad? He said, and he had to reverse it. No, oh, no. Take it off masonry setting, which was going like that, <laughs> to wood, because you want a smoother exit. And he was going to go... <laughs> <laughs> he had to take the thing out. Did he fill it then, or did he just leave it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he filled it. He put a nice little, um... Raw plug. plug. <laughs> and, uh, well, he fell a sand it over. He's right as nine. <laughs> Right now, it's decision time. It's which ends the worst, so which of these two clips is going to end the worst? It seems like the obvious answer, but you've got to think the man in the house with the sledgehammer that's trying to destroy the house. That's got to end badly. What's, what's the worst that can happen is this guy's going to get buried by rubble. That's yeah. it. But the point is, and that's kind of obvious... Yeah, the worst thing is this guy could die. That's but the this, worst. this <laughs> is, I think... <laughs> what I'm saying is this, it has, it, it's got well, kind I mean, of a limitless in the other potential one, for Yeah, in the other one, thousands of people could die. <laughs> could die, yes. <laughs> We're going to go for the baseball. Yeah, You're going to go for the baseball. baseball. What are you going to go? Baseball as well? No, let's go for... Let's we'll, go we'll for that idea. You're the man indoors, ball. the Dutchman. It's a tricky one, though, isn't it? OK, let's take a look, uh, starting with this one. OK, OK. okay. <laughs> is it a bird? Oh. 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 The bird disappears, just in a puff of feathers. Let's see it again. Where's the bird coming in there? Where is he there? Oh, there he is. Oh. Wow! <laughs> That fat bloke will have that fried and eaten. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a dove to me. Yeah. One of those things grab. But oh you know what? Oh my god, it's a dove of peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's when peace died. <laughs> That's the worst thing ever, the death of peace. <laughs> After the incident, the pitcher said the bird was in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in a better place now. <laughs> That's a very precise description of what happened. It was yeah. in very yeah, precisely really the wrong place at very precisely the wrong time. Yeah. That place, instantaneously earlier or later, would be fine. Yeah. It almost defines wrong place, wrong, at wrong time. time yeah. Yeah. If, if your kids ever ask you, what does he mean, wrong place, wrong time, you say that. 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 <laughs> that <laughs> of peace. Yeah. If you're wondering what must have been going through the bird's head at the time, it was the baseball. <laughs> So, did something worse happen to our DIY expert? <laughs> I like it already. <laughs> he's looked up, he's looked up, he's thinking, hello. <laughs> yes, of course, maybe have some more hash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come back and smoke near the dirt and joke for that one. <laughs> Idiot lives. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see it again. Uh, yeah, go on. Let's have Just I love the way he looks around like he knows it's going to happen. The one thing that hitting this wall won't do <laughs> is make this ceiling fall on me. No way. <laughs> of that I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> His wife is standing, filming, going, oh, I wonder, is he going to come out? She yeah. hasn't moved. Yeah, she doesn't put the camera down. <laughs> you see that guy? Just, just, just to see that he, he gets hit by the beam, doesn't he? Look, at that point, he could be dead. His wife literally just dips the camera and carries on filming. Oh, it's a bit of a cut. Oh, there's, ah, a, there's cut. a cut. Okay. There's a cut. Okay. There's a cut. Okay. It's probably a cut during, you know, nine months of reconstructive surgery. <laughs> 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 I bet that he does a lot of shit like that. Yeah. I bet, you know, she's like, I oh, remember that time we got a yacht and he just smashed a hole in the bottom of it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like that again, isn't it? Do you remember the time he made that fireplace with a hydrogen bomb? <laughs> <laughs> so the baseball clip ended the worst on the grounds that it was something of an avian snuff movie, whereas the Dutch builder was fine, and should you need your loft converting, is surprisingly available. <laughs> so at the end of that round, the points go to Johnny and Brian. All to play for now as we turn to the wall of worst. Our final quickfire round, one point per question, so fingers on the buzzers, and we start with worst tattoo. What does Luke K have tattooed on his back? Uh, is it the word cretin spelled wrongly? <laughs> <laughs> Has he got the words, how's my shagging? <laughs> <laughs> There's a clue in his Christian name. 
Yeah. Well, Christian name, Luke, some something Star Wars esque. Like, You're absolutely right. Yes, those. it is in fact this. Oh, that's brilliant! Bloody yeah. hell, they've got that's they've given Luke Jenny Bond's face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, worst idea, what is this man attempting to do? Is it the Dutch guy? This time he attempts ceiling painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with balloons. Oh, this and is the guy who, who, who did loads and loads and loads of balloons. Thousands of them, these little helium balloons. He was seeing how many it would take to take off, and he went for miles, didn't he? That's absolutely right. Yes, it's Larry Walters of California, who wanted to float 30 feet above his garden, but ended up clinging on for dear life at a height of 16,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> and he drifted into a, an international flight path. Exactly. Didn't that's he? Right. And there were lots of airline pilots <laughs> radioing in, saying, um, I, I don't think it's me, but I really honestly think there's this guy <laughs> sitting on a sunbed at about 30,000 feet. <laughs> Either I shouldn't be flying this plane <laughs> or something should be done. As he came down, he got caught in a power line blacking out an entire neighbourhood for 20 minutes, just as the local news was about to lead with a story about a redneck moron in a balloon chair. <laughs> Worst protest. How did this pair spark a protest? Is it that they've adopted a child? <laughs> so they've somehow ticked all the boxes for, for Reading Council social services, <laughs> they've adopted a child and it's only come to light because a, a couple in Reading have tried to adopt a child and they've been given a flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is to do with a forced breeding programme in a German zoo. They're gay. They are. They're gay There's... penguins, I can see it in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're gay. Bosses at a zoo in Germany drew protests from gay rights groups when they flew in four female penguins to encourage the gay couple to reproduce. Zoo authorities started questioning the penguin's sexuality when they noticed the penguin enclosure was always immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> Worst date. Why did Cambridge student George Green fail to turn up for his date with Gwen? It involves this letter. Is it one of these things that they do occasionally when, like, there's a letter from the 1920s or something and they don't deliver it? Exactly um, right. Yes. It's a letter that was posted in 1950 and delivered in 2006. The Daily Telegraph tracked down George and found him to be a historian at the LSE. They also tracked down Gwen, finding a skeleton wearing a carnation at table three in Monty's. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of that round, let's take a look at the final scores. This week's winners are Johnny and Brian, but this week's worst team is David and Frankie. Our thanks then to Johnny and Brian, David and Frankie, and there's just time for a final look at this, the worst Wayne Rooney look-alike. <laughs> You've been watching Best of the Worst. Good night. For exclusive outtakes from the Best of the Worst, text MOBILE to 83188 to be sent a link to the Channel 4 mobile site. Next, Charlotte Church with West End star Ashley Simpson and Danny Dyer. Welcome to Best of the Worst, a celebration of the very best of the very bad. We'll be looking at everything from the worst album covers to the worst thing to do with a large mallet. Not to mention this, the worst thing to see ahead of you in the queue for the loo. <laughs> <laughs> so let's welcome our guest this week on David Mitchell's team, comedian Frankie Boyle. <laughs> and with Johnny Vaughan tonight, pop superstar Brian McFadden. Round one is pick the worst, in which both teams try to pick the worst from a number of options. Once they've made their choices, the audience votes, and the team that the audience agrees with gets the points. Tonight we're picking the worst wedding, and our teams have a number of happy couples to choose from. Jordan and Peter. Missy and Skipper. <laughs> Bob and Jane. <laughs> and Sharon and Cindy. <laughs> the Dolphin. 
OK, Jordan Peters went. She had a sort of uh, a pink Cinderella theme. She had that funny big see-through pink carriage. Was it a Cinderella-themed wedding? I because think... she had tits like pumpkins? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is, there's there the carriage. Is. There is the carriage. And it's, look, it's a love heart step. Now, I don't know if you had to define tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd say that's absolutely tasteless. And you know what? That, that's where the pony was going for the piss. Look, he's going... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did Jordan tell OK Magazine that she and Peter were going to do on their first wedding anniversary? They went to, I think, Disneyland in Florida. And that's right, yeah. Yep, to renew their vows. Jordan and Peter went to Florida last year and met all the Disneyland characters. They're a bit tacky, but quite fun, said Mickey Mouse. <laughs> uh, for her wedding to Peter Andre, Jordan wore a long white dress. It went all the way down to just below her knickers. <laughs> Say knickers. <laughs> she married. She married that dolphin, who she likes enormously. But she's and dolphins actually do have a, I know, a massive libido, don't they? They're really sexy mm. animals. She's looking for his blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is dolphin marriage legal? It can't be legal. You can't start giving someone tax breaks because they say <laughs> that. <laughs> It'd be quite galling for gay people, wouldn't it? No, you can't marry, unless it's a dolphin. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a dolphin of opposite gender, obviously. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, that's just stupid. <laughs> I think the thing about marrying a dolphin is it is still more intelligent than Peter Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Where does a dolphin put the ring? Jumps through it. Nice. Jumps through it. <laughs> Uh, what happened when they first met? They had sex and she nearly drowned. <laughs> <laughs> According to Sharon, when we first met, something clicked. Yes. <laughs> the dolphin. <laughs> when Sharon Tendler married Cindy the dolphin, some of Cindy's family were at the reception in the tuna sandwiches. <laughs> this is, uh, these people married as Homer and Marge Simpson. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really remember the, the of episode of The Simpsons where Homer had shit all over his face. <laughs> Yes, it's got it in his hand as well, if we look. <laughs> Looks like, I don't know, he might have gone through the paper there, or... Uh... <laughs> He's gone through the paper, gone through the paper, wiped his mouth... <laughs> don't, don't say that in an as-you-do kind of a way. <laughs> We've all been Come there. On. Show me a man who hasn't wiped shit all over his mouth, I'll show you a liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were their wedding vows? I don't! <laughs> Till death do us Bart. Oh, dear. That doesn't work at all, cos even in The Simpsons, Bart isn't a verb, you know. <laughs> Here are the rest of the wedding party. Look, one of the... look at that blonde one. <laughs> yes, she's, she's come as Marilyn Monroe would look today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Missy and Skipper, what humiliation did Skipper suffer before his wedding? Oh, did he have his balls cut off? Yes, he was needed. No doubt after enjoying the stag night too much. <laughs> after a stag night, Skipper ended up